Hello PC people, it is I, Dave. The Microsoft shill. And I'm Jacob. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, but no, I have not been paid off by Bill Gates et al. And yet I've still made the switch over to Microsoft's new Edge browser. And I kind of think you should too. And you, Jacob. Especially you. No, I'm good. But I thought we got past this. I thought Microsoft had accepted that no matter how much they try and make us use Edge, especially when we first boot up a Windows 10 PC, everyone just installs Chrome anyway. Maybe it has, and maybe that's why the new version of Edge is just so good. Potentially even better than Google's Chrome. Why? Because it kind of is Chrome. You got some explaining to do, son. So yeah, Microsoft has both killed off its Edge browser and reinvigorated it. What's going on with this new zombie browser, I hear you ask? Well, back in December last year, Microsoft announced that it was adopting the Chromium open source base for its continued development of the Edge browser, effectively killing the slick but annoying version that shipped with Windows 10. So Chromium is Google's open source web browser project and is a feature like app that allows people to build their own browsers on top of it. As it stands, it's a fully functional bit of software, but lacks some of Chrome's advanced features by default, such as auto updates and some licensed codecs. Microsoft has been committed to the open source ideal with Edge since its inception, the original was built on open source base too, but it claims that by switching to Chromium it will be able to give back to the open source community and improve Chromium as well as Edge and other browsers. And it's already started giving back too, with the pursuit of ARM64 compatibility for Chromium helped by Microsoft's focus with Edge. But that doesn't mean that Edge is now just a Chrome clone with nothing to show for itself. Microsoft has dipped in to streamline Google's efforts and has either removed or replaced 50 different services from the back end. And it's this streamlining and the subsequent performance increase of the Edge browser that has made it suddenly relevant, arguably for the first time since Microsoft moved on from Internet Explorer. Microsoft is also bringing new features to the browser in future updates, promising to bring back the ultra-smooth scrolling of the original Edge, as well as support for older versions of Microsoft and even Mac OS 2. That'll really get the Safari Faithful's turtlenecks in a twist. So what are we looking at in terms of performance? Well, I've picked three of the most popular internet browsers around to go up against the new version of Edge and open up the same 26 different tabs of various types in each of them, just to see how they cope with proper tab-happy browsing. Right, because that's generally heralded as a major flaw in Chrome, its tendency to demand more of your system than we think a simple web browser maybe should. So what are the other two? Well, we've also picked the latest version of Firefox, which is Firefox Quantum, as well as popular Upstart Vivaldi. That's an incredibly lightweight browser, also based on Chromium, but designed to bring in some of the feature set Opera lost when it too transitioned to Chromium. It's also worth pointing out that we're using the Canary channel for Microsoft's Edge, which is the daily updated version and is also the most up-to-date then, but also possibly the most flaky. So who comes out on top? I'm guessing Chrome's bloat is going to push it down the leaderboard, but I'll know these really are the end times if a Microsoft browser turns out to be the best. So it all depends on what metric you prioritize. When it comes to the memory footprint, then yes, Google's Chrome browser is absolutely the biggest memory hog. With the 26 different tabs open, Chrome is using over 2.7 gigabytes of memory. The most lightweight comes out as Vivaldi as under 1 gigabyte, with Firefox hitting nearly 2.4 gigabytes itself. Microsoft's Edge browser though is looking good here with 1.9 gigabytes of memory in use across the 26 different tabs. Once they've settled down, all four of the browsers we've tested come out as using around 1% of CPU load during use, which means there's not really a lot to separate them on that front. But speed of loading is also key. Getting those 26 tabs into a usable state takes time, and it's here that the otherwise impressive Vivaldi browser falls down. That takes over 14 seconds for all 26 tabs to become usable. Firefox was the next slowest at nearly 12 seconds, with Chrome a little over 10 seconds itself. Edge here is the winner out of all four, however, becoming stable in less than that 10 seconds. So what are you trying to tell me? That Edge is really the one browser to rule them all? Or that I should be switching over to the spiritual successor to Internet Explorer? <laughs> I think I'd rather switch back to Netscape Navigator. Yeah, look, you can be all hipster about it if you like, but I'm the one with the beard, and after all the time I've spent with Microsoft's very latest version of Edge, I'll happily say that it's actually the best all-round browser I've used recently. Sure, but you had a Windows phone. What's more, you had a Windows phone and you actively liked it. I can barely take anything you say about Microsoft seriously knowing that. Well, whatever. Vivaldi may be super lightweight, but it's also a rather slow browser compared to the rest, and especially compared with Edge. It also lacks the auto-translation function which I use a lot in my day-to-day -day work. Doesn't Edge also struggle with translation though? Well, it did okay with Japanese and German and Norwegian and all that, but it did struggle with Chinese traditional up until a couple of days ago. But then the Canary Channel updated the problem away almost as soon as I discovered it. And because of its general speed and lower memory footprint, Edge is just going to be the one that I'm going to be sticking with for now. Until it gets bloated with Microsoft feature crud and grinds to a halt, that is. <laughs> oh, ye of little faith. But yeah, until then. On that bombshell? Don't do that. Okay.
Thanks for watching. And if you like what you've seen, give us a thumbs up and go disagree wholeheartedly with Dave's bizarre edgelord opinion and subscribe to the channel just for the sheer hell of it. Yeah, what have you got to lose? And if you want to try out Edge, even the most stable weekly build, there's a link in the description below. Again, what have you got to lose? Take care now. Goodbye.